Well, I'm sure you heard that noise and it does not sound healthy. A noise like this tends to happen on engines that wear out over time, vehicles that have a lot of miles on them, and it's kind of normal in a way. But it's also easy to mistake this for an engine that you might think is going bad and will need to be replaced. And well, that's not necessarily the case, or at least not yet. More about that in a minute. This is especially prominent on engines with adjustable valve lash. Whatever parts you need to fix your engine or the rest of your car, check us out at oneauto.com. You might just find the parts or kits you need. To better understand this topic, it's important to know what valve lash even is, or valve adjustment. On some cars, the valves that open and close as the engine runs is not adjustable at all. It gets set from the factory, and there isn't even a way to adjust it. So if something does go wrong, you're going to need to tear the engine apart, replace components, and hopefully nothing catastrophic broke. On other vehicles, however, this one in particular, well, this is a Subaru engine, but we're talking about a Honda over there. Both of these have adjustable valves, and all you see here is the rocker arm, which opens and closes the valves. That, in this case, well, has quite a bit of play. This is the play that you want to avoid in order to not hear that chattering noise as the engine is running. This is basically what you're hearing. Not a good sign. If it is adjustable, you want to make sure you do it every once in a while. I would say, well, if you do a timing belt, let's say this one has a timing belt. If you replace that timing belt, check all the valves. It's important to do it once in a while. This vehicle right here that we're about to look at in more detail has about 200 and some thousand miles and I don't think it's ever been adjusted uh, valve wise. So even this one, this one I loosened up on purpose, but this is basically what you want to remove this, this slop out of here so that everything is touching and as the engine spins, it doesn't smack the valve continuously because this happens hundreds or thousands of times every minute because the engine spins fast. And doing this can cause a lot of wear to the engine and could actually even lead to catastrophic damage if you leave it for a long time. Let's talk about the two extremities of the valve adjustment being out of adjustment. First, let's start with it being too loose, too far out of adjustment, kind of like this, because that's the most common thing you're going to experience as the engine wears out as it functions over time. What you'll hear is that chattering noise. It sounds like it's broken and it's, well, it's on its way if you don't address it soon. But other than that chattering noise, you're going to have very poor performance because this amount of movement here is actually supposed to be movement in the valve opening and closing, which will let the engine breathe. It'll take in air through the intake valve and, well, exhale, breathe out through the exhaust valve. And if it doesn't open just this little bit, it's going to limit the amount of air going in and out, therefore reduce performance significantly. So you're gonna have that. You're also gonna have a significant amount of wear, if this goes on for a long time, on the head of the valve right here, on this pin or this threaded rod that goes through the rocker arm, on the cam lobe, on the roller of the rocker arm, anywhere that was supposed to have contact but now has play, it's going to act like a hammer hitting it every single time. Hundreds and thousands of times per minute as the RPMs go up and as you're driving, and obviously that's going to cause severe damage over time. On the other hand, what happens when the valve clearance is too tight is not only are you going to have a hard time starting the engine, it's going to also idle poorly and, well, overall run poorly, but the risk of burning out the valve and the valve seat is huge because what happens is the valves stay open for too long. And that is not what you want because you need them to seal up at times so that it stops taking in air and stops, well, exhaling air, breathing it out as exhaust so that it can actually combust and make the power you want it to make. And usually on the valve seat, which is a perfectly machined surface and made it up with the valve, a human hair is enough to break that seal. So imagine that as combustion gases are rushing by because the valve stays open for too long, that fire will eventually, the heat will melt that seat and it'll burn up the valve, burn up the seat on it and then you're in for a big repair because, well, you can't just fix that. Usually you have to replace components, 
or assemblies, or even the entire engine. One more thing I want to say about this is in extreme cases where the valves are too tight, adjusted too much, and the engine is an interference engine, meaning the pistons go up into where the valves would be if they were open, well, on those engines, if the valves, like I said, are too far adjusted and they stay open for too long, the piston is very likely to hit the valve. When that happens, it'll bend it right here. So you can see an example on this head, which actually is, is not a good head. It's bad. It's never going to be installed on a vehicle again. But the valves are all bent. So the piston has hit them, and now these are bent out like this, and these are bent out like that. It's never going to seal again, and therefore the engine isn't going to run properly. Now back to our problem. Let's take the valve cover off of this engine to see how far out of adjustment it really is. In most cases, all you need to do is remove some covers, the ignition coils, spark plug wires, and then the valve cover itself. And there it is. With everything torn apart, the first question you might ask yourself is, where do you even find the specs for the adjustment for your vehicle. Well, typically it's a sticker either under the hood or on the upper radiator support somewhere that says what the adjustment should be set to. Now, how do you do it? Well, it's pretty easy actually. You need a flathead screwdriver, a wrench, or a socket, some feeler gauges so you can actually get them in there and, well, feel for the lash or the adjustment, and something to turn the engine over with, and you'll see exactly why. But other than that, it's just about trial and error, basically. You loosen up the jam nut on there, you stick your feeler gauge in, adjust as needed, tighten it up, and move on to the next one. If for some reason you don't have the adjustment or the, the spec on your sticker under the hood, I'm sure the owner's manual will have it depending on the vehicle, or you just do some research online and find those numbers, because typically if an engine has adjustable valve lash, the information is going to be pretty easily accessible out there. So with that said, well, let's get into and adjust these. All right, so the first thing to start with is to have something to turn the engine over because what we have to do is put the cylinder that we're working on at top dead center. That means there will be no pressure on either of the valves. I mean, right now I have two intake valves. Maybe you just have one, maybe you have three, I don't know, depending on your engine, you want zero pressure on those valves. With the spark plugs out, you can basically turn any accessory pulley, so power steering pump, alternator, anything like that, and it's gonna be a whole lot easier to turn that engine over with the serpentine belt because a lot of times you can reach pulleys from up top as opposed to putting a tool down on the crank, crawling underneath it or around it. This makes it a whole lot easier. So let's crank this over and just watch the cam. Eventually it's going to release both of these valves on the intake side. Right now they're released, but I'm just gonna keep going until the lobes are all the way up, just like that. I'm gonna stop there. Now we wanna grab our feeler gauges, and in my case, I need 0.23 millimeters for clearance on these intake valves, and all I'm gonna do is, well, I got the fuel rail kind of in the way here, but I'm gonna try my best to just stick it right in between the valve, or the top of the valve, and the adjustment point. And as I slide it back and forth, I wanna feel a little bit of resistance. Right now, I feel none. Now, when I put it in here, I no longer have movement, but that doesn't mean it's tight enough. I'm going to grab a socket to break the jam nut free. There we go. Once this is loosened up, I'm gonna make sure it doesn't spin too much. Now, a little bit goes a long way, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna give it the tiniest bit, about an eighth of a turn. I'm going to snug this back up, and then we'll measure again. This is how it's gonna be the entire time, basically, just trial and error, a little bit at a time, until you get it just right. Sliding in my feeler gauge. Okay. Okay, it made a little bit of a difference, but not enough. I'm going to leave that feeler gauge in this time. I'm going to loosen this back up. Give it a little extra, another eighth of a turn. Snug it. Test it again. Okay, I feel a little bit of resistance. I can still move it back and forth, 
but it feels like it wants to clamp down on my feeler gauge. I would actually go just a tiny bit extra at this point. So loosen this back up, a little bit extra, snug it. I'm not gonna worry about torquing this just yet. Okay, I have some resistance. I can still easily slide the feeler gauge in and out, but I have a little bit of resistance. That's exactly what I want. So at this point, just gonna go down the line. I have another valve on this cylinder to do, and then so on and so forth with all of the intake valves. I'm going to do all the intake valves first, then I'm gonna to move to the exhaust side and do those. Keep in mind the lash or the play in the adjustment here is going to be different on the intake than on the exhaust. The exhaust is always gonna be a little bit bigger because it gets hotter, just because you know exhaust gets past those valves, heats them up, so when metal gets hot, it expands and it takes up that slack a little bit more. So you wanna make sure you adjust it right because if you make the intake and the exhaust valves the same, uh, going by the intake measurement, they're gonna be over adjusted on the back. Or if you go exhaust adjustment on the intake side, they're gonna be under adjusted on the intake side. So you wanna make sure you get that right. Got all the intake valves adjusted. They're all spot on. And by the way, they were all loose on this vehicle. So it's a good thing we checked. Now onto the exhaust side. And remember, it's always a different measurement. So don't forget to swap out your feeler gauges. Here we go. With everything adjusted, everything's torqued down to spec, all that's left to do is to install a new valve cover gasket because it's always a good idea when you pull the valve cover off to just put a new one on. And then after that's installed, run the engine for a minute or two, let that oil cycle, then drain it and do an oil change so that any potential debris that got in there is now, well, cleaned out. With everything back together, it's time to start the engine to hear how quiet it runs now. But just a quick reminder, once again, don't ignore this noise when you hear it coming from the top of your engine because if you fix it right away or very soon, you can avoid irreversible damage. Don't forget, you don't want to have to put an engine in it or tear it apart for just a valve adjustment that you can do pretty easily. So let's turn it on and well, listen to how it runs now. <laughs> 